My name is Christian Garman. I am a meteorologist at WEAR-TV in Pensacola. A typical day for a morning meteorologist starts very early in the morning. I get up at about 2.40. I get to Channel 3 at uh, about 3.15. First thing I do, I walk right into an audio booth we have in the newsroom because the first thing I do is I record forecasts that I email out to radio stations. We partner with like 10 radio stations and so I get in there, get online, figure out what the weather is going to be for the day and start recording those. When I'm done with that, it's about a 10 minute process. I come into the weather center, fire up all the computers, make sure nothing's going on, are there any storms out there, see what's happening. Usually it's pretty quiet. If there were any thunderstorms, I would have already been aware because our meteorologists from the night before and I are usually in contact if there's any sort of an overnight threat. So I start putting together a forecast. Uh, of course, that consists of checking out different weather sensors we have all over the area. We log on to multiple sites now. Of course, it didn't used to be all through the internet. It is now. We've got the National Weather Service in Mobile. We've got AccuWeather and many others. A lot of models online that give you great ideas for what you can expect weather-wise for the next three hours and the next seven days. We used to do five-day forecasts, but the technology is good enough now that we can do seven-day forecasts. So I start that process, putting it all together around 3.30, and uh, by 5 o'clock, the show starts. So I have about an hour and a half to get everything done, and it takes about every bit of that, usually around 4.40 is when things quiet down a little bit for me. And from 5 to 7, we're doing the show, and it's busy. Weather is so important, we do weather in every single segment of the show, meaning every time we come back from a break, the first thing you see is me telling you some different aspect of the weather for the day. Occasionally, we'll kill one or two of the hits, depending on how heavy we are with time, but for the most part, weather stays in. So the show ends at 7, and then from 7 to 9, we've got Good Morning America. Well, I'm not on Good Morning America, of course, but throughout Good Morning America, the national weather guy, Sam Champion, pitches to local weather. So I have multiple hits. Eight times through the course of that two hours, I'm back on the air. And then by 9 o'clock, we have a morning meeting in the newsroom with all the reporters and the producers and the news director. And I have to go into that because weather is our number one thing around here. So if there's any sort of a weather threat, be it tropical threat or just some sort of a local thunderstorm threat, we're going to lead with that in our later newscast. So I go into those meetings to let everybody know what's happening weather-wise. Finally, around 9.40 in the morning, that's usually when the meeting gets done or at least when I get excused from the meeting. Uh, I have a little time, a little downtime, from like 9.40 till around 10.15 to catch up, see what's going on. And then around 10.15, I got to get ready again because we have another newscast at 11 o'clock, so I start putting that show together. It's not as long of a process because, of course, I've done a lot of the work early morning. There's still some stuff to do, but the uh, busier work is before the morning show. And then that show ends at 11.30, and my day is done unless there's any sort of a weather threat. For instance, if I think that at 12.30 we're going to see some thunderstorms rolling through and we may have some warnings, I'm not going anywhere. You can't leave if you think there's a th weather threat. And uh, I'm here until Alan Strum, our evening meteorologist, comes on duty. He usually comes in at 2, although if there's a weather threat and he knows I'm stuck, he'll come a little early. So we usually coordinate that out. But best case is I'm in at 3.15 and I'm out at about 11.30. Regarding stress, for the most part, it's pretty quiet. You know, there's not a ton of stress in this. There are deadlines, but I've done it long enough that I know how to work all that out. When there is severe weather on the air and, you know, you've got to be on the air and you're telling people about tornadoes or those sorts of things, that can get a little stressful. But frankly, it's it's more stressful knowing it's coming, you know, a few hours before because during you're just so busy, you don't have much time to think about the stress. Uh, it's, it's usually an hour or two ahead where you know, hey, an hour from now, things are really going to get going and I got to get serious and I got to get it right. Regarding requirements for this job, you do need to be a meteorologist if you want to go anywhere in this business. I mean, that's the key to the whole thing. There are plenty of people out there who aren't meteorologists, but usually it'd be a smaller market job. And if you want to make the jump to some of the bigger markets, you do need to get that degree in meteorology or geosciences or certainly something science or weather related. Uh, I have two degrees, though. My other is uh, specifically in communication because that's obviously a big part of this as well, telecommunication and film. So, you know, that is a very helpful helpful degree to have, but certainly first and foremost, if you're interested in weather, uh, a degree in meteorology would be key. And also, personality is, is a big part of this job. I mean, there are lots of jobs in meteorology that have nothing to do with television. But if you're interested in being on television and doing this for a living, it helps to be watchable. It helps to be fun. Uh, a lot of times, it helps to be really good looking. That 
isn't what I've got going. I'm a pretty average looking guy, so I try to bring the uh, personality to it, and uh, that is a big part of what I do, and that is a big part of what the viewers want. You know, I mean, anybody can talk for three minutes about what's happening. I really, if you think about it, I'm just presenting a slideshow of maps, so you've got to find some way to make it interesting, and I definitely try to infuse some personality. Uh, also, once you do get that degree in meteorology and get some on-air experience, it very much helps to get different seals of approval. There's the American Meteorological Association seal of approval. Uh, there's also the National Weather Association seal of approval. Uh, I do have both, although for several years uh, I did not, and, and it's not easy to get either one. It takes some time, but it certainly helps when you're looking for that next job. You know, obviously it's another resume builder. And uh, the AMS seal, which is the American Meteorological Society, is a tough one to get. I've got that one, and the National Weather Association. So regarding degrees, I would definitely say that a degree uh, in meteorology would be first on the list, and then after that, anything you can get in communication is huge because in this business, it's changing probably more than any other business on the planet all the time. And the more you know, the better you are. And uh, lastly, I'd say an internship. It is huge. You know, I've worked at Channel 3 for a long time, and I've seen a lot of interns come and go, but a lot of them come and don't go. Many interns have gotten jobs here at Channel 3 just because that internship got them in the door. So that is huge. It's not the only way to go, but if you can find a way to get one, do it because that will pay off as it almost always does. Uh, best part of this job, it's pretty obvious. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, people all the time say, oh, cool, you get to work in television. And it is cool. It really is very fun. In fact, uh, I know for a fact that I have a lot of friends who make more money than I do, and uh, I would say none of them are as happy as I am. The way I always tell people about if, when they ask if I like my job is, I get into work at 3.15 every day, and I look forward to it. So 3.15 a.m., and I'm looking forward to it. Something's going on. It is a very fun job to have. It's also quite rewarding, you know, when you're talking about tropical weather or even just local thunderstorms and you know you tell people five days ahead of time that we're thinking this storm may end up going east of Florida and then that does happen gives you a lot of credibility makes people believe in what you do and that is very rewarding also if you've got a tornado warning in Escambia County and we're talking about the fact that there could be a tornado right now near Molino and then you find out sure enough that there was damage in Molino but nobody got hurt you know that hey we did our job and that is very rewarding so that's a huge upside plus it really is a lot lot of fun 99 days out of 100. So what's that other day? Well, when there's severe weather around, it's not so fun. It's very serious. I mean, we see stories every day from all over the world where people lose their lives because of some sort of weather phenomenon. So it's really easy to lose sight of that aspect of this job, but you can't do that. It really is very important to, to get it as right as you can, and certainly during any sort of a severe weather threat to make absolutely sure you feel good about the information you're putting out. So that is, I wouldn't say that's a down side to the job, but certainly you can't overlook that side to it because it's easy to get sort of lost in the fun part and forget that there is really some serious work to do. Uh, downside to television, well, you know, look, I, I get up at 2.30 in the morning. I, I would call that a downside. Now, that's specific to a morning meteorologist, but the evening meteorologist doesn't get off till about 11.30 at night. So the hours in this business, whether you're a meteorologist or a reporter or an anchor, whatever you are, it, not great. That's definitely a downside. It can be tough on families, too. There's no doubt about it. If you've got kids and you're working the morning shift, you're never going to see those kids get up and go off to school. And if you're working the evening shift, you're not going to get to have those family dinners. That's definitely a downside. Another thing is the money. People always assume we make a ton of money. I hear it all the time. Oh, you're in TV. You must be loaded. No, not the case. There is a lot of money in this job for people like Diane Sawyer, Sam Champion. When you make it to those top 10 markets or make it to the network, yeah, then you're doing okay. Those guys make some real cash. But mid-sized market like Pensacola, it's, it's a fine living, it's not terrible money, but it's not big money like everybody seems to think it is. So if you're interested in making a lot of money and having all those really cool things that are out there, I would definitely really think about doing this job because this job is not something you're going to do for the money. More than anything, I'd say it's something you're going to do because it really is a lot of fun. It's a great way to make a living, but it's a moderate living. There's nothing big about the dollars in TV, unless you're in some sort of a huge market. And of course, those jobs are really tough to get hundreds of people. If there was a morning meteorologist job that opened up in New York or Los Angeles or San Diego or Phoenix or Atlanta, uh, hundreds would try for that one slot. So 
let's say 200 people try, probably 170 of them might be pretty darn good, but there's only one slot. It's not easy to get those jobs. So I would not get into this business for the money because there's not a ton of money for a lot of us. One more negative that, uh, that I wanted to mention is this is a feedback driven game. Okay. A lot of times you get really nice emails, people telling you, Hey, you know, that was great. I had a wedding this Saturday. You told me it wouldn't rain and it didn't. Thank you for that good job. But, uh, certainly there are times where you will get a phone call or many emails or a Facebook post or a tweet or anything else saying, you know, you blew it. You screwed this up. We were going to do this and now we didn't. Or you said it'd be fine. We all went. We paid 40 bucks. We didn't get that it happens uh, you know you're trying to predict the future in the business of weather so there are going to be times where you're wrong and rest assured now more than ever people are going to tell you that you're wrong it's a lot easier than it ever has been before to feed back any number of ways so that's certainly something you have to get used to you gotta have a thick skin and you know you just got to take it with a grain of salt doesn't mean you ignore it because it is important if you got something wrong learn from it but again a lot of times you're gonna get it right and they're far less uh, uh, likely to tell you great job more often than not if you're gonna hear from them it's because something happened and didn't go well one more thing I would say again you know do this for the love of it because it really is fun and it's easy to fall in love with this business there's a reason that many of us do it and many more try to get in just don't do it for the money because unless you get really lucky and get some amazing job at CNN or ABC or something like that there's not a ton of money in the business but it is a lot of fun and if you've got any interest at all get that internship get your foot in the door and find a way to get a job because it can be a very rewarding business